I've been waiting. Uh, I've been waiting for you too. <laughs> elements. I mean, you know, the, the old theory is that we only have five or six stories that we tell over and over again and, you know, dress them up differently. And there's certain similarities, sure. Sort of, I think they both fit the mold of the classic hero's journey, which is somebody sort of surviving in their ordinary world, get an extraordinary call to duty for whatever reason, resist the call, find a mentor that convinces them to overcome the call and then go and and in search of the golden crown, you know? So it's almost like, uh, I think the author was one of the first, or at least one of the longest standing examples of the hero's journey. Um, and, and I think, you know, I think that Hamlet, to a certain degree, follows that archetype too, which is obviously the, uh, the, the, the um, blueprint for Sons of Anarchy itself. So. What, what makes now a good time to retell the, retell the story? You know, Obviously, filmmaking is a creative um, process, and so it's. I, I believe that good filmmaking, authentic filmmaking, always comes from um, somebody with a vision and a story that they want to tell. And this was um, the Arthurian legend was something that Guy Ritchie had been sort of circling and thinking about and trying to figure out what his version would be for a long, long time. They'd always had a burning aspiration to tell this story. So knowing what Guy Ritchie does, the idea of doing King Arthur, once he decided he was gonna go into production, I felt, even before I read the script, fairly certain that he had something fresh and unique and would be authentic through the prism of his creativity. So, um, you know, I think that was more than anything that guy just had a, a strong vision for what he wanted to do. Last question, George. What do you look for in a world? I'm sorry. Okay, last two questions. Okay. Just <laughs> stop a fist fight breaking out. <laughs> you, you got further through yours, so I'll take yours first, and then I'll come to you. I promise. Okay, okay, One second. You. you got it. What do you look for in a character um, there, are me there are several criteria uh, in order. It's always being excited about the director. Um, and then obviously the character, and then just generally within the thematics of the film, having the opportunity to explore something that interests me in life. You know, like in for instance, um, the, the central theme of King Arthur is the importance of overcoming one's personal demons, or the importance of overcoming one's personal demons in order to be strong enough to deal with the external challenges that we have to face every day. So. That was something that I had been really cognizant of in my career and it had been just sort of in the law of attraction and the idea of manifesting everything that you can in your life. That idea became very, or that theory became very clear to me, that a lot of truth to it, that there's a lot of internal work that needs to be done first before you can go and, you know, fulfill your destiny or your dreams. And when you tell about an audition story, and is it true that you did you were supposed to do Thor in the Fifty Shades of Grey. What happened with Thor? Uh, I wasn't supposed to do Thor. I was. Uh, I auditioned and I met with the director and um, the, and the guys in Marvel um, several times, four or five times, and it was a sort of awkward dance that we were having. I wasn't hundred percent sure I wanted to do it, and they weren't hundred percent sure they wanted me to do it. But there was something that kept bringing me back into the mix. Uh, and there was something that kept ha you know, having them gravitate towards me, and then they found Chris Hemsworth, and then that dance ended Fifty abruptly. Um, Fifty Shades, I did um, accept that role, and then the rest is history. <laughs> thank you. All right, guys, thank you very much.